this is the last chapter before the uh, the good things. <laughs> <laughs> the the coming of the Lord, you know, is uh, being discussed. Okay, so Revelation that's Revelation chapter eighteen. Uh, all right, so we are now on our part eleven. Okay, and uh, but before we proceed to the next chapter, which is chapter eighteen, we're going to uh, go back to read passages from previous chapter, which is chapter seventeen. Uh, to pinpoint an important truth, why Christians should not fear when we see an alliances forming up. You see, uh, to you who are uh, familiar with the prophecies, okay, about you know the ten kings and things like that. So when when you see uh, uh, nations coming together, do not fear, because. You see, uh, when the ten kings rise to, to power and they hand over their authority to the, to the beast, you see, don't panic because that is a part, part of the story, okay? The end game story. So rejoice because when that happens, the, the book has turned its page, okay? Meaning to say we're, we're, we're drawing near. So let's read uh, Revelation 17. Uh, Revelation 17, uh, verse 12. Okay, it says, The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose, and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them because He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And with Him will be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. 15. Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin, ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to accomplish His purpose by agreeing to hand over to the beast their royal authority until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Now the question is, is there, is there a city that rules over the nations of the world? Or at least exercises influence over the nations of the world? Do you know one city that does that? That has that kind of uh, influence? Well, if you want uh, some answer, okay, you need to study that yourself. Uh, you need to uh, look into it, uh, read the detailed information provided in this chapter of Revelation, chapter 17, because it, it provides the location, you know, the, the etc. So th that's up to you. So I, I leave that to you, okay? If you're interested. Okay, so do your own research. You can uh, just, you know, start to decipher uh, uh, chapter 17. Okay, do a synthetic study. All right. But my goal, listen up friends, my goal today is not to identify who the prostitute is. It's not to identify who the, 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 who is Babylon the Great. That's not my goal today, but to expose her business, okay, w what she does. Okay, so what the prostitute is up to and why God will bring that much judgment on her. That's our goal. I believe that is what's important for today's episode, okay? So that Christians 
will remain vigilant at all times. So, our target is the prostitute's agenda. Okay? It's, it's uh, the evil plan that this prostitute or this woman has against the people of the world. Okay, let's, let's do that, all right? Whew. Now, um, why are we doing this, huh? Why, why are we trying to, uh, why are we trying to uh, research on, on her activities? You know why? Because we know that uh, through Bible prophecy, uh, she will have success in, and she will be judged for it. Okay? She will have success in what she does and what she will do and she will be judged for it. So we will expose it so that you are made aware okay and you have something to think about you have something to contemplate and pray about and weigh it in your spirit okay with the lord always so this is very important all right so let's begin revelation 18 chapter 18 verse 1 says after this i saw another angel coming down from heaven he had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demon and a hunt for every impure spirit. A hunt for every unclean bird, a hunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her. And the merchants of the earth grew rich for her excessive luxuries. So, as you can see, this woman, this Babylon the Great, is demonized. You know, it says she has become a dwelling for demon okay and for all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adultery so you see one of the traits or characteristics that you see about this woman is that she is an immoral woman <laughs> of course now, verse 4 says, Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay, back, pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit in throne as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. Verse 8, Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. Verse 9, When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her, terrified at her torment. They will stand far off and cry, Woe, woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour, your doom has come. Okay, so uh, we're now in uh, verse 10. Did I read to you? Yeah. I read to you earlier, uh, Revelation 17, remember? Revelation 17 says, uh, 
Verse 16, okay, Revelation 17, 16, okay, maybe I forgot to uh, explain this part. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute, okay, this woman that we are talking about. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked and they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to hand over to the beast the royal uh, authority until until God's words are fulfilled. You see, everything that is going to happen in the last days that includes the the the, the coming together of the ten kings. You know, uh, uh, handing over their authority to to the beast. All of which, you know, all of those are part of the story. That's why it says, you know. Uh, we just read to you 16 and 17. And the last part of verse 17, it says, Until God's words are fulfilled. So there's nothing to worry about because over all the terror and all the destructions that's going to come upon this earth are also still they're under God's supervision because God has a plan. And you see, somehow, uh, some part... Uh, uh, we see the enemy is like you know the one uh, winning, but but the enemy is not winning. Okay, the the the, the enemy is just fulfilling its role, and so even those kings, you don't need to hate them. You don't need to hate them. You know why? Because they're just doing their part in the story. Okay, they they they're just doing their part. So. Everything is falling into place. The, the main thing is the prophecy is true. Okay? The main thing is that whatever God says will happen, will happen. So whom do, should we fear? The world? The beast? No. God. Because, you see, God wrote the book already. It's done. It's finished. All we need to do is, you know, get familiarized with, with what, Ever is written in the book of Revelation, and you know when it happens, you know, aha, just like the Bible says. So it is, right? So, friends, uh, ladies, and gentlemen, <clears throat> uh, going back, uh, what was the last verse? Uh, I think that's verse 10. So, that includes this one the destruction of this great city called city of babylon so we know that there was a babylon uh during the time of nimrod okay but there's going to be another babylon the futuristic one uh as of the moment we uh, we we can't pinpoint okay but some said they know which city is this right now but I don't want to spoil, so let's see what will happen, how it will turn out, how it will play out. But uh, let's just finish uh, the chapter, okay? Verse 11 says, The merchants, merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys her cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron, wood, and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cargoes of cinnamon, and spice of ins incense, myrrh, and frankincense, of wine, and of olive oil, and uh, of fine flour, and wheat, Cattle and sheep, horses and carriage, carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. Verse 14, they will say, The fruit you long for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off, terrified at her torment they will weep and mourn 
and cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. In one hour, okay, again, the one hour is there. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship and sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. When they see, see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, Was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she, was, she has been brought to ruin. Wow. <clears throat> so, what we see here in chapter 18 is the destruction okay, of uh, Babylon the great. It's, this is the doom of Babylon the great. Now, uh, verse 20 says, okay, rejoice over her, you heavens. Okay, you people uh, who belong to heaven. <laughs> it says, rejoice, you people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets. For God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. Whoa. So now, like I said, we're going to expose today the activities or the agenda that this prostitute had in mind, okay, against God's people. Okay? So it's very clear that this woman, this city, has a, a target. Okay, a target people group. <laughs> it says, rejoice over her, you heavens. Rejoice, you people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets. For God has judged Babylon the great. God has judged the prostitute. Okay, God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. So, Verse 21 says, Then the mighty angel, now listen to this one. This is very important. This is the final <laughs> blow, okay? Finality of Babylon's doom. Verse 21. It says, Then the, a mighty angel pick up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. Okay, let me read that one more time. The mighty, um, then a mighty angel pick up a what? A boulder the size of a large millstone. You know, we were in Israel and we saw how big, how huge these millstone, millstones are. Okay, to crush uh, the, 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 the branches and the, the leaves and the, the fruit of olives, so olive fruit, so it can, you know, uh, extract the oil. And um, I, can o I could only imagine what kind of boulder <laughs> is this, okay? It says, mighty angel pick up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, with such violence, the great city of Babylon will be what? Thrown down, never to be found again. How could that be? How could that happen? Okay. The, the, the millstone, okay, was dropped through. Uh, the, the angel threw it into the sea and then... And then what happened next is that this, this, this great city of Babylon was never to be found again. So, huh. looks like the city will not just burn 
uh, with fire, not just burn with fire, but it will sank. You know, it will submerge. Okay, it will be underwater because it will not be found. It's like a lost city. Okay, so that is the kind of judgment that God will impose on her, on the prostitute, for what she did, okay, or for what she will do, because this has not happened yet. Okay, so verse 22 says, The music of harpists and musicians and pipers and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. Whoa. Verse 23. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. So, meaning to say... Uh, there will be no more activities whatsoever. Any, you know, no weddings, no, no one can work there anymore, no one can play music. That includes the whole city, okay? The whole city will never be found. <laughs> so if the city is not, you know, if you cannot see the city, how can people go there and work and do the, the normal things, right? So, wow, such great judgment will fall upon this city. And uh, the way I see it, it will be underwater. It will be, it will literally be underwater. But let's continue. Okay. It says, your merchants, merchants were the world's important people. Okay, so, okay. That's why there were a lot of people who got rich through her. Okay, uh, and then, by your magic spell or sorcery, all the nations were led astray or were deceived. Verse 24, in her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who had been slaughtered on the earth. You know, it's, it's easy to miss that part. But if you, if you try to uh, analyze the, the, the magnitude of judgment that God has imposed on her, on, on, uh, on the prostitute, you, you might think, why, Lord? Why? So, in verse 24, you see why. Because, you know, God being our father, you know, he, it's like uh, she, is, she took it like a personal offense. <laughs> you know, the, the thing that the prostitute did to his children, to his people, to his church. It's like God took it personally that he judged her that much. Okay? Very swiftly. Okay? Verse 24 says, In her was found the blood of what? Of prophets. And of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. If you read uh, chapter 17, you see that this woman was, you know, holding a cup, the blood of the saints. So she was drunk with the blood of the saints. So you see, that's the agenda of this, this woman, the, 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 the prostitute. Uh, all right, so let's just uh, first um, ask the, let's answer this question. What would, why would God judge a city like that? Of course, we already answered that because of her agenda. It's a crime. That's the, what the Bible says, a bloodshed, mass slaughter. It's wiping out a lot of people. It's like a depopulation thing. Uh, uh, all right, so le how about, uh, let's read it in the King James Version. Revelation 18.23, King James. It says, 
and the light of a candle shall shine no more in all ah at all in in thee okay in you in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by your sorceries were all nations deceived okay now listen for by your what sorceries were all the nations deceived sorceries okay now if you read that in greek because you know we all know that uh, the new testament was written in greek right so if you read the word sorceries in greek we get the word pharmakia okay pharmakia and it says in verse 24 and and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all the that were slain upon the earth now the amplified version says and um, and never again will the light of the lamp shine in you and never again will the voice of the bridegroom the bride be heard in you for your merchants were the great prominent men of the earth and it says because all the nations were deceived listen to this all the nations were deceived and misled by your sorcery your magic spells and poisonous charm verse 24 and in babylon was found the blood of prophets and of saints god's people and of all those who have been slaughtered on the earth now if you try to uh, analyze that that is not something that has that's been done in a certain locality you know it's not something that is hidden in a certain remote area but it says slaughtered on the earth okay so you see it's it's this is this is big this is global thing right so now i'm not inventing this again this is what the bible says okay because you see the book of revelation was written at patmos okay uh, by john the beloved remember that that was like two thousand years ago this this prophecy of scripture was written two thousand years ago and this was not just you know john was not the originator of this book remember let me remind you this book of revelation was written by god about jesus and the father handed it to Jesus and Jesus handed it over to John through an angel because the Lord Jesus Christ would like to address his church. The seven churches originally, but we are part of the church of Christ. So until he comes, we will hold on to what we have, right? Because the Lord wanted us, you know, he wanted us uh, he want to to caution us okay so that we can prepare ourselves for impact okay for for all of the the the, the events that will take place before he will we would finally appear in the sky and behold it's going to be our final redemption amen so i hope you're excited because next sunday we're going to discuss chapter 19 all the way all right so i hope you're excited with that but you know we cannot skip this part because this part is part of the story okay so let's go back and, and dig some more uh concerning pharmacia you see sorcery in the bible uh is pharmacia in greek or okay or what uh, we call modern medicine medicine okay the term pharmakia is an abstract noun meaning sorcery magic and practice of magic arts now according to gotquestions.org okay gotquestions.org is that sorcery is the use of spells divination divination or speaking to spirits 
and is clearly condemned in the Bible. True. This is an abomination for God. So if you're a sorcerer and you live in the past, uh, you will not live long. <laughs> okay? Now, in Paul's day, the word sorcery, pharmakia, primarily, primarily meant dealing with poison or drug use and was applied to divination, divination and spell casting because sorcerers often used drugs along with their incantations and amulets to conjure occult power. Okay, so you see, um, this is the work of the enemy, okay? Um, the work of the occult. That is from gotquestions.org. So now let's uh, see what Thayer Greek Dictionary has to say, okay? According to Thayer Greek Dictionary, okay, pharmakia is the use or administering of drugs, poisoning, sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. So you see the, the connection using a, 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 a science and the, the religion, <laughs> the occult religion, okay? Uh, you uh, mixing it with powers from hell, <laughs> okay? So they, they cast spells. It's like uh, making a formula. You're you're cooking something and you're putting on those those poison poisonous spells and you know things like that. So um, now New Testament Greek lexicon, pharmakia, has the same definition. Okay. The use, pharmakia means the use or the administering of drugs, poisoning, sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. So, as you can see, okay, if you want to do your own research, okay, you can, you know, open your phone, gadgets, and try to check you know, uh, uh, dictionary, the, the Greek dictionary, and, and, and see it for yourself, okay? It says the same thing, okay? So this pharmakia is actually the word where we got the English word pharmacy, okay? That is where we got the word, uh, the source of our English word pharmacy. And it says the concrete noun is pharmacon, whose primary meaning is poison. So, now, uh, if you put the original Greek word pharmakia in place of the English word sorceries, okay, in the last part of, the, of verse 23, it would say, For by thy pharmakia were all nations deceived. Right? Pharmakia is where we get Again, the, the, the English word pharmacy. So, pharmacy is a well, uh, well, anyway, uh, let me read. Uh, the Bible reveals that Babylon will deceive all nations, okay, by the use of pharmacy. That is in connection to their occultic religion, magical arts, and idolatry. So, uh, the pharmakia in Revelation 18 that will deceive the world has its deep root or it, it's, it, it is deeply rooted in witchcraft, okay, and the occult world. So we, we must understand that uh, this uh, occultic religion will continue until the last days. Okay, because this is the, uh, one of the religion that Satan has established. So, as you can see, it's clear in the Bible that uh, it will, there, there will come a time now, uh, now maybe some of you are asking this question, uh, a question like, uh, isn't it that God has used uh, medicine, uh, pharmacy, 
for our good, for our healing? Yes, I agree. I agree that God can use science for our healing. Yes, but do you believe that the enemy can use the same medium? Okay, he can use the same medium for his evil intentions. So this is what we're looking at right now. That although God owns everything, okay, and he blesses people, scientists, doctors, medical people with wisdom so they can create medicines for our good. And that's a good thing. That's a hallelujah. But we cannot, uh, we cannot deny that there is a prophecy that one day, that soon, sometime in the future, we don't know when, that the Bible, but the Bible clearly says that people, the people of the world will be deceived. Okay, why are they deceived? Because, they were, oh, because of this sorcery. And what is this sorcery? The sorcery is actually what the Greek says, uh, the Greek uh, mentioned. I mean, the Greek word for that. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, the world was deceived by the, the prostitute using pharmacia. Okay, so... When that time happens, how would we know? Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. When the angel dropped the boulder, okay, you know, the, he threw it in the sea, right? Uh, so when the angel dropped the boulder, the woman can no longer continue with what she is doing. Okay. It's done. When she falls, when Babylon the Great falls, when the, the great city falls in one hour, all her activities will stop. It will cease entirely, avenging the, the persecution and the murder of God's holy people. And not just God's people, but including those who were deceived and killed by, uh, by the pharmacia. <laughs> Okay, so, so let's read again. Revelation 18.23, it says, The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The, the voice of the bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were, were the world's most uh, world's important people by your magic spell or sorcery or pharmacia. All the nations were led astray or deceived. Verse 24, in her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. Now, this is massive. Sounds to me like a global scale. But you see, God judged the murderous city and he's taking her crime personally and seriously. Why? Because the crime was done against his very people. Because the, the, the atrocities, the savagery, the, the, the cruelty, the, br the brutality, you know, was done against his redeemed, his, his, his holy ones. Okay? Therefore, God will not let this thing, this thing pass. This is going to happen, friends. So take note. What is it that deceived the nations? Can you answer that question? What is it that deceived the nations? The answer is very simple. You can find it in verse 23. What is it that deceived the nations? The woman will use pharmacia, pharmaceuticals, okay? That's why we need to be vigilant. We need to be watchful, alert, attentive, be on the lookout because such an attack from a demonic forces, from a cultic people, from a, a people who worships the devil, okay? The, 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 such an attack, okay, from, uh, 
from, from the works of the enemy through, through drug use, through the use of medicine. They, they, there will come a time when this prophecy will, will really um, come to its fulfillment, but we don't know when. If you want, you want to ask me, is, is, is this today? Is this happening today? Well, I don't know, and um, I cannot tell. I have no evidence. I don't have nothing. What we're trying to uh, discuss today is a prophecy, part of end time prophecy, okay, from the book of Revelation. Remember, who is the author of this book? This is the Lord. This is God Almighty. And then the book of Revelation was written by God, okay, and about who? About his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And every word in this prophecy is about, you know, is true. Okay? And, and uh, so let us be careful, you know, not to reject the words of prophecy. Because this is, this is from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ sent his angel to John at Patmos so that John, through, through the vision can write the book of Revelation. So the author of this book is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, not me, okay? Not me. I am just a vessel talking to you right now, okay? I am just trying to trigger something in you so that you will do your research, friends, that you will do your, you know, that you're, you, you, you're going to study hard, okay? That you will study hard. Uh, because this is very important, you know, y you cannot be an ignorant Christian living in the last days. You cannot do that, okay? You must understand that one of the most important book that you need to read nowadays, okay, in the last days is the Bible and the book of Revelation, okay? And then uh, this is just a small part of what this prophecy prophesied about okay so so that's it friends that's it we know that uh nothing in the you know i i look i do not know when this will happen but one thing i know one thing i'm certain of that everything the Bible prophesies about will come to pass. Okay? It will surely come to pass. So again, we don't know when it's fulfillment. That is why God sent to us the Holy Spirit. That is why people, when people come and ask me something about this, you know, something related to this, I always tell them this, do your own research, pray, and, you know, the last and most important voice that you need to be listening <laughs> at is the voice of the Spirit of God in you. You see, the Holy Spirit is greater than our, than our hearts. So, if you are related to God, you know, you can hear, you know the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And you know the, the scriptures, you know, you know what the Bible says. And so I believe the Holy Spirit will remind us of things, will remind us of, of the prophecies that we read. And so He is going to warn us, you know, He's, he's going to control our hearts and help us understand. Either God is, will put peace in your heart, you have peace in your heart, or no peace. Okay, no shalom. That's why it's very important because one day we're going to stand before the throne, okay, at the judgment of works. And, and as, we, as we stand before God, I want, you know, personally, I want to stand before God with a clear conscience that in all my life, while I was living on planet earth okay i have lived my life 
according to his conviction. It's like, I, I, I want to stand on that day and say, Lord, I did my best to seek you, to seek your will, to know your will, to follow your conviction. You see, it's very important to be guided by the Holy Spirit and by the Word. And so again, let me remind you this. After you know, discussing all of this, the bottom line is this. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So you have to, you know, in every decision you make, make sure, make sure, make sure that you have peace. There is an approval from the Holy Spirit inside you. Because you know what? Besides the Holy Spirit, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen next? Who knows the exact things that's going to happen when you, when you press that button, when you go that direction. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Only God knows. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the Word of God. The Word of God will guide us and the Holy Spirit will, will help us, will enable us to understand. He will illuminate our, our, our minds. He will help us see. Okay, what the scripture meant. And, 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 um, but I cannot do that for you guys. I cannot do that for everyone because I am not God. Okay, I am a fellow servant like you. So my encouragement to all, to the family of God, is to be vigilant, to read the word, okay, to know the scripture to go deeper, to develop your relationship with God through the Word, through prayer, through worship, through fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Because the more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more you'll become sensitive to His leading. The more you become sensitive to His guidance. The more you become sensitive to His notions. You know, so th th this is the, the, the key, my friends. It is developing your relationship with God through the Word, through worship, because you need to develop your relationship with Him through His presence, His felt presence, and, of course, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. That's what the Apostle Paul said, the grace of God, uh, may, may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is very important in the last days, my friends. But do not fear this Revelation 18 thing, okay? This Revelation 18 thing is a judgment against, against the prostitute woman, against the great city, against Babylon the Great. So although it is uh, pertaining to a specific city, but again, friends, uh, what I hope, what we have accomplished today is to help everyone. Uh, may, uh, I hope this made everyone aware that there will come a time when the enemy will use the same medium. Okay, he's going to use uh, uh, the, the, the pharmaceuticals or pharmacy uh, or or. Pharmacy, uh, what's that again? Uh, uh, the, the enemy, uh, pharmakia, sorry, <laughs> the word pharmakia, it's in Greek. So, right? So listen to the Holy Spirit in your heart. He will be the last and final authority say. He has the final say, okay? Uh and, and uh, again, surely God can use pharmacy for our good, for our healing, but the enemy can also use it for his wicked or evil purposes. John 10.10, 10, it says, John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Okay? Uh, in other versions, it says, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus said, I have come that, they, that you might have life and that you might have it 
abundantly. Okay, so you see uh, opposite. You know, the 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 Lord's uh, goal is different. The enemy's goal is different. Okay, there is no fun part with the devil. If you side with the devil, the devil will still torture you and kill you. You know, so you, you must choose wisely. Choose the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. Although the devil will, will oppress uh, God's people, the devil will try to uh, kill, to murder God's people. But the thing is this, you see, as long as you are in Christ, <laughs> you will be saved. Okay, You will be saved. You will have eternal life. Alright, so that's it. So, don't side with the enemy. Don't side with the devil. Okay? Again, before I close, why did God judge the city called Babylon the Great? Why do you think? Why did God judge her? Because she meant to harm us. Because she meant destruction. She meant to destroy God's people. Okay, she, she meant to take lives. You know, her agenda is John 10.10. 10, kill, steal, and destroy. And how? By the use of pharmacia. Okay, so he deceived the nations. How? By the use of pharmacia. So she deceived the world. She pertaining to the city called Babylon the Great. And if, you're, if, if, if you want to ask me where is that right now, I cannot tell you because I don't know. Although my, prophet, my, my Bible school professor said he knows and he gave me a lot of evidences and proofs point by point why that place is the place. But, well, <laughs> we'll see. We will see how it will play out. Okay, in the final days. And, um, and the lesson, what is the lesson for today, friends? I hope you caught it, okay, when I said that the lesson that we need to, you know, what do we need to do now, okay? The lesson is this, develop your relationship with God through the Word, through prayer, through worship, by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Because we need to be what? You, we need to, be, to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So you, you need to cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's the word, cultivate. Because, you know, the more you spend time with the, the presence, with the Holy Spirit, the more you talk to the Holy Spirit, the more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you are cultivating not just that relationship, but the ability, your spiritual sensitivity to the conviction, to the voice of the Spirit in you. So you see, it's not just uh, the Word of God that we need. We need the presence. Okay, We need the, 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 the rhema, okay? the, the Word, the rhema. The, the, it's what the Holy Spirit, what the holy the, the it's something that only god the holy spirit can do inside us okay guys i can i'm talking right now through this microphone through through the internet through your phones and you're hearing me but i can speak to your ears to your hearing ears okay but not to your heart because it's only the spirit of god who can speak to your heart Okay, only the Spirit of God who can, who can uh, quicken your spirits, make it alive. Only the Spirit of God, you know, he, he, only He can regenerate our sleeping, our dead spirits. Okay, so that's the work of the Holy Spirit. I cannot do that. God can. That is why there is no hope without the Holy Spirit. Okay, we need the Holy Spirit and the Word of God uh, are... You know, every word in scriptures, they are spiritually discerned. 
That's why a lot of people find it so hard, so difficult to understand the Bible, to understand prophecies. You know why? Because it's spiritually discerned. You need the Holy Spirit to understand scriptures. So, 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 so what's the best move? The best move is this. Develop your relationship with God through what? Through the Word. Okay? Through by studying the Word. By reading the Scriptures. Okay? And then what? Develop your relationship with God through worship. By spending time in His presence. By loving Him. Honoring Him. By building the presence of God in your room, in your place, in your residences. Okay? Hallelujah. Uh, develop your relationship with God by what? By fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Talk to Him. Okay? He is the most ignored person in the universe, <laughs> they said. And it's true. Because the Holy Spirit is with us. The whole time, 24-7, every day. But then, how much time do we give the Holy Spirit? Do we talk to Him? Do we, do we engage with the Holy Spirit? Do you engage with the Holy Spirit? Engage with the Holy Spirit, friends. Because that is, that is uh, your ultimate weapon against deception. You know what? The ultimate, let me write that. The ultimate weapon we have against deception is what the word the bible and the spirit spirit okay and the holy spirit okay so I want you to remember that, friends. When you don't know what to do and you're confused, there's only one, <laughs> one way to go, one place to run. Let's run to the Holy Spirit. Go read the Bible and ask, Lord, guide me. Help me make the right decision. You know, things like that. So, this is going to be between you and the Lord. Okay? So, let me, uh, let me conclude or close this uh, topic because I know this is a heavy one. It's a heavy, right? It, this is heavy stuff. This is very simple but heavy stuff. But we need, you know... Christians need to be aware of this. That's why Jesus sent the, this revelation to John so that the church won't be caught by surprise, right? Um, that is why Christians, I encourage you to be vigilant, to read your word, spend time with the Holy Spirit always, okay? Develop your relationship with God. Now, last, this is the last passage of scripture that I'd like to close with. Okay, Revelation 19. I know Revelation 19 is for next Sunday, but but this is the concluding part of, of today's uh, episode. Okay, so Revelation 19 says, verse beginning from verse 1 to verse 2, just two verses. Revelation 19 says, After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Verse 2, For true and just are His judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute, prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. Last part says, He has avenged on her the blood of His servants. See that? He has avenged on her the blood of His servants. So you see, for me, God took it personally. Okay? The, the, 
the offense personally against this uh, city called uh, Babylon the Great. Why? Because of what she had done to God's people. So, ladies and gentlemen, God is a just God. God is a God of retribution. Okay? And, and, and we know that uh, nothing escapes His eyes. And one day, uh, we will forget all of the negative uh, catastrophes and, 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 and disasters that had happened in, in this planet. Everything will be forgotten. You know why? Because of the joy of the bliss. Because everything, you know, God will make everything new. Okay? So, guys, uh, I don't want you to focus on the negative you know the, the parts, the wars, and the 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 the, the, the famines and the earthquakes and the, all the devastations that will come upon the earth, but uh, from this book of Revelation. But what I wanted you to focus on is that the end part, okay, which we will start to discuss, which we will start to unveil next week, okay, in our next episode in this series of revelation which we entitled the end game story of god so thank you so much for joining us today and i hope you are blessed uh, we love you and we mean all blessings and goodness and, and joy we don't want you to be stressed guys okay we want you to be happy okay and the secret to be happy is to stay in the presence of God, in the will of God, to know that you are right with God, okay? Because if you're not right with God, get right with God right now, okay? Get right with God. Because all the advices, the counsel that we gave you a while ago, like uh, Develop your relationship with God through the Word, through reading the Scriptures, through worship, through, through spending time with the Holy Spirit, by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. All of those, you know, that will not work with you if you're not right with God. First, you need to get right with God, okay? So, and if you're not right with God, or maybe, um, maybe you need... Maybe you're not saved yet, okay? Maybe you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You must be born again first, okay? You must be born again. If you want to live with God in heaven, you must be born again. Religion cannot save us. You cannot find that in scriptures. You will never find that in scriptures. Because the truth is, only Jesus saves. Salvation is found in a person. So, friends, uh, I will not make it long. Uh, actually, you can send us a message if you want to know the way to life, to eternal life. If you want to obtain eternal life, you know, we will be happy to assist you. And if you have questions concerning eternal life or concerning repentance or whatever, and so, so on and so forth, uh, uh, you can send us a message, okay? It's for free. We will not charge you anything, no cost, okay? Because uh, we we want you to be saved. We want you, we want you to be with God in heaven, okay? So God bless you all. We love you. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for uh, the family of believers, your family, your children. Oh God, thank you for your anointing upon their lives. Thank you that the Bible says the anointing will teach us. That's your spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things. And so today, Lord, thank you for teaching us, Lord. And Lord, Lord, I pray that you will guide your children in all walks of life, in, in their daily uh, uh, activities, uh, Lord, uh, with their 
uh, decision makings, guide them, God the Holy Spirit. I pray that they will deepen their relationship with you through the Word, through your presence, through worship, through, uh, through talking to your Spirit, by, 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 by fellowshipping, by communing, communing with your Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for your anointing. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you His peace, both now and forevermore. May the goodness, the grace, the favor of God, may the grace of God and the love, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. So again, guys, thank you for joining us today. See you again next week. And God bless you. Bye.